Researchers at the Indian Institute of Science have developed an advanced fuel injector system for fighter aircraft using 3D printing technology. This high shear injector is designed to improve combustion efficiency in military aviation by producing extremely fine fuel droplets for optimal combustion. It is expected to enhance the performance of advanced fighter jets, such as India's Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA. The new injector surpasses commercial models in several aspects. It ensures consistent flow, crucial for steady fuel delivery in high-performance engines, and features precise spray patterns for uniform fuel distribution. These innovations contribute to better flame stability and reliable combustion under various conditions. The use of 3D printing allowed for intricate design and rapid prototyping, which sped up development and provided flexibility in the design process. According to an ISC researcher, the injector demonstrated exceptional performance in droplet sizing, spray formation and flow consistency during testing. It was rigorously tested in simulated fighter jet conditions, including high-speed airflow, altitude variations, and rapid fuel flow changes. These tests confirmed its robust performance even under extreme operational environments. This fuel injector is poised to be a critical component in India's AMCA program, a next-generation stealth fighter which requires advanced propulsion systems for its goals of high maneuverability and supersonic speeds. The injector could also be adapted for other aerospace and defense applications, including unmanned aerial vehicles, missiles and space propulsion. The success of this development opens up opportunities for further advancements in combustion and additive manufacturing in aerospace technology. Larson and Tubro, LNT, a major Indian engineering conglomerate, is increasing its involvement in India's aerospace and defense sector by contributing to key domestic programs. The company's efforts include support for the Tejas light combat aircraft and potential roles in future projects such as the Tejas MK2 and Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft AMCA, reflecting its commitment to India's self-reliance in defense manufacturing. LNT has a long-standing collaboration with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL, providing critical components, such as wings, for the Tejas LCA. Their expertise in precision engineering has been essential for the Tejas fleet's successful production and operational readiness. The company now aims to expand its role by supplying components for next-generation fighter jets like the Tejas MK2 and AMCA. Beyond defense, LNT is also exploring opportunities in the aerospace and commercial space industries. The company has supported India's space endeavors, working with the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, on initiatives like the Gaganyan manned mission and satellite launch vehicles. With the growing global demand for commercial satellites and reusable launch systems, LNT is positioned to capitalize on this market. India's expanding aerospace and defense market offers significant opportunities for private players like LNT. The government's Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative, which promotes self-reliance, along with policy changes such as increased foreign direct investment limits in defense, is driving the industry's growth. LNT is leveraging these opportunities to enhance its capabilities, form international partnerships, and expand its reach in global markets. Retired Lieutenant General P.R. Shankar, former Director General of Artillery in the Indian Army, revealed that his team at IIT Madras is working on integrating ramjet propulsion technology into the Panaka Multi-Barrel Rocket Launcher System, or MBRL. This innovation, he explained in an interview with news media, could potentially triple the range of the Panaka MBRL, which is a key component of India's artillery forces. The Panaka MK2 currently uses a solid-fuel rocket motor, that allows it to reach a range of up to 75 kilometers. By incorporating ramjet propulsion, which utilizes the vehicle's forward motion to compress air and generate thrust using atmospheric oxygen, the range of the system could significantly increase. Unlike traditional rocket motors that carry both fuel and oxidizers, ramjets are more efficient at high speeds, as they only require atmospheric oxygen. The addition of ramjet technology would provide sustained thrust during the rocket's flight, reducing drag, and extending the trajectory. With this modification, the range of the Panaka MBRL 
could increase to around 225 kilometers, enhancing its strategic capability to target deep within enemy territory without needing to reposition closer to the front lines. However, modifying the Panaka system to incorporate ramjet propulsion involves significant engineering challenges, including changes to its aerodynamics and propulsion systems. The development of ramjet engines also requires advanced materials and manufacturing techniques, which could increase costs. Bharat Forge is nearing the final stages of negotiating a major contract with the Indian Ministry of Defense for 307 advanced towed artillery gun systems. ATAGs, valued at over Rs 6,000 crore. Bharat Forge, having emerged as the lowest bidder, is set to receive 60% of the contract, approximately Rs 4,000 crore, while the remaining 40% will go to Tata Advanced Systems Limited or TSL. Both Bharat Forge and TSL are development partners of the ATAGs, which was initially developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO, in collaboration with the two companies. The contract negotiations have advanced following a comprehensive technical evaluation and commercial bidding process. Bharat Forge has stated that the discussions are expected to be concluded by the end of the current financial year, 2024-25. The Indian Army has already conducted extensive trials of the ATAGs under various conditions to assess its performance prior to finalizing the contract. In addition to this domestic deal, Bharat Forge has secured an order for ATAGs from Armenia which has led to talks for a larger follow-up order due to the successful performance of the supplied systems. External Affairs Minister S. Jaishankar recently discussed the resumption of direct flights between India and China with his Chinese counterpart, Wang Yi during the G20 summit in Rio de Janeiro. The ministers also addressed the restart of the Kailash Mansarovar Yatra, which had been suspended, along with direct flights, since the pandemic in 2020. Jai Shankar and Wang Yi acknowledged progress in disengagement efforts along the border, which have helped maintain peace. They also discussed enhancing bilateral relations, focusing on areas like data sharing on trans-border rivers and media exchanges. The meeting highlighted the importance of stabilizing ties, and managing differences between the two nations. The ministers agreed on the need for further dialogue, including upcoming meetings of the special representatives and the foreign secretary vice minister mechanism. Jai Shankar noted that while India and China have differences, they have cooperated constructively in forums such as BRICS and the SCO and within the G20. He emphasized India's commitment to a multipolar world and independent foreign policy, rejecting unilateral dominance. Wang Yi agreed that India-China relations are crucial to global politics, and both leaders stressed the need to stabilize their relationship and move forward, as previously discussed during a meeting between Prime Minister Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping in Kazan. This discussion follows ongoing diplomatic and military efforts to resolve border tensions, particularly along the line of actual control, LAC, which have been strained since 2020. Both nations have since reached an agreement on patrolling arrangements to ease tensions along the border. That's all from YKS team for now. If you like the information, then please do share and give a like. You can also become our channel member and support our work. Thanks for watching.